Hi, hello, welcome. Can I uh, interest you in some uh, some voodoo? No, not the you come get the voodoo kind of voodoo. I'm talking about voodoo, the click to heal add-on, which you definitely should go and get right now if you haven't already. If you already have it installed, then I bet you're here because you tried playing around with it and you just couldn't figure it out. Don't panic, that's what I'm here for. It might look intimidating, but it's actually quite simple to set up once you get the hang of it. First, what is a click to heal add-on? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an add-on that lets you click on a player frame to heal them. For example, right-clicking will cast penance on the person whose frame I clicked on, while left-clicking will allow me to cast shadow mend. Shift, control, and alt modifiers can be used as well, so if I hold shift and right-click, then I dispel my ally with purify. These are just the keybinds I use, of course. You can set up the add-on however you'd prefer. I don't think you need an add-on like Voodoo to be a good healer, but it's very useful and gives you the same or similar advantages that healing with mouse over macros offers, while being infinitely less complex to set up and maintain. It also ensures your main keys, like 1 through 10, are free so that you can switch to DPSing in your downtime if you so choose. Before we set up the add-on, I want to lead with a bit of a disclaimer. I am not a healing pro. I do not push Mythic Rating or Mythic Plus Dungeons. Instead, I'm pushing Middle Age and live with chronic pain thanks to losing the genetic lottery. I also have to work with ADHD. As you can imagine, that means my reaction time isn't always great or even good. But if you're like me, all is not lost. I've been using Voodoo since Wrath to Heal, and it's made healing not only possible for me, but fun too. If you somehow won the genetic lottery, first of all, I am very jealous, but congratulations. And secondly, I imagine you'll get even more out of using this add-on than I could ever hope to. Once you have the basic knowledge of how the add-on works, you can take and build upon that information to make profiles that really suit your playstyle. Now, let's get into the game and set this add-on up from the very beginning. All right, fellas, here we are on a fresh druid that I have boosted because I'm stupid. No, because um, I thought it might be best to show like something completely fresh or logging onto a character for the very first time, but it's high enough level that it has spells. And um, who doesn't want like 400 druids on the same server, right? So here we are, we're gonna log in. She's um, balanced spec right now because they don't let you select resto when you boost, which is a crime, but th I'm sure they just don't want you to get stuck trying, <laughs> trying unsuccessfully the quest. Oh boy. Welcome aboard. Welcome King aboard. Needs every hero the shattering of the sky has everyone on edge. I including can't skip the this. Let's pass the time by brushing up on your battle skills. Let me know when you're ready to get started. But I don't... Are you serious? Can I skip this? Well met. Ugh. Well, first I guess I'm gonna set up my add-ons and fly through this... whatever this is. Uh, I'm sure that it will be easy. Oh, would you look at that? We uh, we made it to Stormwind in one piece. Oh, good. Okay, now for Voodoo. Voodoo is in this upper part of the screen, and it looks like a mess. You have three. It has three parts here: the Buff Watch, um, the Private Tanks and NPCs, and then Group One. The first step is we're gonna try to clean up this UI a little bit. These panels are not things that I use, mainly because they, they're they just not worth it to me. But you can find guides on how to set these up or to even delete them and then set them up your own way if they would be useful to you. If you're mostly a raid healer, you might want separate panels for your tanks. But I usually just heal dungeons or um, raid finder and I, don't, I find I don't I don't need them. 
So the first thing that I always do is go to my minimap and I use this add-on minimap button bag to get all of my add-on icons into one collapsible menu. It's so useful. And then I find the voodoo icon, which is like a blood elf head, and I right-click it and uncheck show buff watch. Now that's gone. And then I'm going to go back to this. Oop. There we go. And left-click on the icon. And it'll pull up this panel. So to get rid of the private tanks and NPCs, we're going to go to Move on the bottom tab. And it pops up all of these things that I can get rid of. So, you can get rid of these two. If you need the private tanks, just don't get rid of that particular panel. If you don't need any of it, just get rid of all of it. And you're going to hit OK. So now this is all that you have left. Whoa. There we go. This is the main voodoo panel for healing. When you're in a party, this will show everybody. You can make these panels pretty much as big or small as you want. Voodoo is a very versatile add-on. And as you saw from some of the clips that I shared at the beginning intro, this isn't what my panels look like at all. Now, I'm going to kind of go through how you can set them up to look similar to my panels, but you don't have to do what I do. You can do whatever you want. Everything works a little bit differently for everyone. I actually went with the default frames of this size for literal years. I only made them bigger in the last couple of years as I've gotten older and my eyesight isn't as great. So if you like the compact look, go ahead and just keep it just like this. It doesn't hurt anything. Uh, for an example of what it's going to look like in a full party, you can see this right here. These will all be filled with people. So the first thing you're probably going to want to do, especially if you use Voodoo on the right side of your screen like I do, uh, my husband uses it on, I believe, the left side of his screen, but everybody's a little different. Some people like it up here, some people like to put it down here below their character. I just like it right up here on the right side so it's not near the middle of my screen so I can still see. But something that you're definitely going to want to do is go to the Panels tab down here and change the max columns to 5. Just so that when you do have a full raid group, it's not stretching off of your screen this way. Or a big, big just horizontal line of, of parties. This way they're all grouped up in a way that you can kind of... Or sorry, let's test a 40 man. I mean, with these small frames, even 40 people is completely doable. Completely doable. If you want to see a 20 man, it's going to look like this. Pets get their own section. As you can see from the clips that I shared, I take the pet one off, which I just exit off here. And then I recreate it as a, a completely separate panel. So I'm going to do that now so you can see me do it so you know how to do it. So you just X off on the pets tab right here. And now you will never see pets, which means you can take your panels and actually set them down to four. So if you had your 40 man group, that's what it would look like. We're going to stay here, and we're going to click Add. Here's a new panel. We're going to press this little plus sign, choose, um, type is special, and the value is, and this is where you have main tanks if you are wanting to make your own tank panel, but I'm going to pick Pets and hit OK. So this is where I keep Pets, down here. And that's because I, some people like to delete pets and never look at them, but if you've ever healed a dungeon where the tank has died and a hunter has, you know, put growl on their pet or a warlock has put taunt on their void walker, then 
it feels kind of dumb to not be able to heal the pet if they are literally the last thing standing between you and a wipe. So, being able to heal pets is very useful to me. You may want to keep the pet panel smaller so that you can still use it, but it's not taking up a big section of your screen. I like to make mine the same, but I can definitely see why people might like a smaller one for their pets. So, next step is going to be panel size and headers. So now we're gonna go to panels and we have this right here. None of this matters a whole lot. You can change, you can fiddle with the settings if you like, but we're gonna go first to headers and we're going to uncheck show. I don't need headers. I don't use them for anything. All right, now we're gonna go to sizing and you can play with the Y gap and the X gap and the spacing just to see how you like it. I would leave the panel scale at one times. You can definitely like adjust these numbers so that the border around the edge isn't as big. I like to keep a little bit of a border and that's because you still have to be able to, to get the thing to drag it around and you pretty much have to click on the edge to do it. So having like just a little border there you can click on is for me worth it. But you can always go to the move and then move it around if you need to. So next we're going to change the bar height and if you drag it down you can make, I mean you can make these like really big if you want to. I wouldn't, but you can. You can, you can do so much stuff with this program. Okay, so let's say we're gonna make it, I usually pick like an even number or, if I can get one. And then I think I like to make these like about 125 or 130. Let's say 130. Not 150. Again, these are just things that I like. I like the bigger, bigger panels. Makes it easier for me to see, especially with a druid where you have a lot of hots that you're gonna want to see broadcast on the panel. You kind of, you kind of need the room so it doesn't get too cluttered and you can still see the health bar. All right. So once you've picked your desired height and width you're gonna go to bars and you can select your whatever weird pattern you like here um you like the zebra print well it's more like a sunrise or something but you can select that if you want you can select whatever that's supposed to be you can do plain i don't like plain because it's a little dark for me i usually go with minimalist okay so this is where you can change the mana bar height. And my opinion with the mana bar is, I mean, I believe you can even get rid of it if you need to under some of the settings. Or you can just put it at zero. Yeah, you can just get rid of it. But I like to see it because I need to know how everybody in the group is faring on mana. Now... The only thing left to change is the text. If you can make the text class color, you can add an outline to it. You can um, make it much bigger, which I usually do. You can change the color of the text. It's all, it's all up to you. So choose where you want it. If you select this, the 100% will be below the name. If it's up top, if it's to the right or left. I prefer it below the name, um, and I usually go with white with an outline and not a shadow, and I make it big, not that big. Yeah. Um, this one could stand to be a little bit bigger. Yeah, we'll go with that. But you can do whatever you want. 
Whatever looks good to you, whatever feels good to you, it's going to be just as effective as anything I do. So the next section is we're going to talk about how to set up the hot icons. Hot icons are in the little clips I showed. They're where you see spells that appear on the panels to show you who has one of your healing spells on them. It's, it's not complicated, but I feel like most people are going to want to see this. And it's really easy to set up. You're going to pick between one of these two setups. Or you can do more. This bottom setup is the one I usually go with. Where you have uh, sections in each corner and then some in the middle. And I do this one specifically because, I, I don't know, I like things to be super symmetrical. And I have a specific way that I like to set up, especially for druids. So the one will correspond with this. And whatever's in slot one, will, an icon will appear right there. Whatever you put in slot three is going to appear down here. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up real quick. Alright, so we have that set up. So whenever I use any of these spells, and they are on a target, they will appear over here. Okay. Now we're going to talk about how to set up the actual click to healing. This is the, the fun part, but also the part that takes a little bit of getting used to if you've never used a click to heal add-on. So we're going to go to spells. And as you can see, the modifier key is none, which means whenever you click any of these buttons or mouse up or down over the panel, then you will perform that action. So for druids, I set mine up like this. When I wheel up, I want to use Scenarian Ward. You don't have to capitalize it. So long as the spelling matches, it should light up. There are a couple of cases where it won't light up because it has some slightly outdated information, but it will still remember and use that spell. Um, for down, I like to do Life Bloom. For left click, I like to do... I think it's Regrowth. Yep. For right click, Rejuvenation. And then we have our modifier keys. So shift, when you click on it, if you shift left click, what do you want to do? I want to swift mend. And the right click says nature's cure, which I'm going to go with that, assuming that's the druid uh, dispel. This is shift right click is always my dispel on everybody. Control left click is always um, iron bark. And I don't think I have another spell. So if I'm not going to use something for the right button, I always make the left and right the same. So in this case, control left click and control right click will both cast iron bark. This way I don't get confused if I don't use both. And I, right now I'm not using alt at all, but I used to in the past. So it just depends on what key is more comfortable for you to hit while you're playing. Um, druids have a lot of spells, but... I don't map too many of them, I would say. So I'm going to hit OK. We've got them mapped. And then I'm going to go into my spell book and find my other things, my other spells that I normally use. And don't get me wrong, I usually keep some of these spells out on my bars. Because if I see somebody out in the wild running around, they're almost dead fighting a mob or something, I can click on them and still press it. I can just click on it. Um, in the case of wild growth and efflorescence, I can still put them down because they're not only bound to this. So, we're going to run into a little problem when I do this, and I will show you how to fix it. But if I right click, I'm going to rejuvenate. And you can see this right here is telling me that... The target is Swift Mendable. Uh, in recent years, they got rid of Swift Mend needing a hot to use, but now, now it does need one again, so this is back. It's, I would say it's a nice feature for somebody who 
desperately needs this information, but for me personally, I like I don't need that. I don't need to know it's swift they're swift mendable. If there is a hot on the right side right here, I know that they are swift mendable. So we're gonna fix this. I'm gonna get rid of it or show you how to change that to something else. And I'm gonna show you how to make these little icons just a little bit bigger. We're just gonna go back to Voodoo again. And we're gonna go to the panels and hot icons. And you're just gonna slide this down to about 64, 65%. Yeah. And as you can see, when they get like closer to being over, they'll start counting down for you and everything. So you know when they're about to expire and you can refresh if you need to. As to this large, very large dot, you're going to go to general and then indicators and special dot is what it's called. And it's set to swift mendable right now, but you could turn it off if you don't want it there at all. But I do use um, roll icon. I use roll icon. So as you can see, it shows that I'm a healer. I know it's not necessary if you play with a predetermined group a lot, like you have a guild group that you play with, then you, you definitely don't need this at all because you're, you're gonna already know who the other roles are in the group. But in a pug, it's oftentimes up in the air and that's especially true in pug raids or raid finder. So I always have the icon. And to fix this, because it's so large, I want to make it smaller. We're going to go to, is it more? Yeah, we're going to go to more and then shrink this puppy. Or maybe not that small. 0.65 is pretty good. Done. Okay. Perfect. Now, when I use my spells, right click, left click, Wheel up, wheel down, efflorescence. Now you can see all of these different hots that are on, on my character all at the same time. And if I shift left click, I'll swift mend. Shift right click, I'll try to dispel. So, this is kind of where we're at. If you want to change the panel, you want to make it bigger, you want to make it smaller, um, that's definitely an option. Um, I don't know, I don't really have anything else to say about it. Like, this is just how, how Voodoo goes. And as you can see, you can add all kinds of different special things. You know, if you want something to be swift mendable, you can add something to the left or part of the threat bar or part of the mana bar can be covered by it if you really want. Um, I just prefer the roll icon. Again, with spells, you can do shift up, wheel up, shift wheel down. If you have like a button three and four on your mouse, which a lot of people do who don't have the, like the gaming mouse with 12 buttons, you can set f button four and five to be used for that. I have an MMO mouse, so in my experience, 4 and 5 don't work, but it's possible that, say, 9 or 10 would work on an MMO mouse. You can just play with it and see what works for you. You can also use, uh, you can set up keys that are local here, or global key bindings. You can set up, um, for smart cast under miscellaneous here, where when you are out of combat, it will automatically cast these spells on your group or other people in your group when you click on a panel. So if I'm out of combat and I try to regrowth on a target the f it, that they have a, a poison on them, for example, or a curse, I will cleanse that first. I always unselect cleanse. I like to take this off because when you're running from one group to another and it's not important that a player be dispelled immediately, but it is important that you heal them while you're out of combat. 
I don't want to be cleansing and wasting a whole global cooldown. So yeah, I don't really touch buffs and debuffs. Um, debuffs by def default will color the panel when a target is dispellable, so it will color it differently. All right, I think that's it. Hopefully this helped <laughs> at least one person. And of course, if you have any questions, just let me know. I really, really, really like healing. Oh, and before I go, I just realized that this pet panel is still sitting like that. So to fix that, if you want it to match your other one. Jeez. You can go to, um, panels and click on this so that it's highlighting itself and then go to sizing and change that the way that you want. Go to headers and take that off and it'll be, you can make it, you can make it look however you want. If you want a little tiny pet panel, you know, just like a little guy where, you know, if somebody has a pet, it'll just be like a little tiny box of a pet, then you can definitely do that. So here are a couple little tips for using Voodoo, or more precisely for how you can use Voodoo. You can use it on DPS who have a cleanse or dispel, like mages, monks, or paladins. This way you know immediately if somebody in the group needs a dispel and you can do the dispel without hardly breaking rotation. Trust me, your healer will thank you for it. You can also use Voodoo on your tanks to keep an eye on healer mana or to cast heals on other people in your party who may need them. You can also see very quickly how much damage your party is taking without taking your eye off the center of the screen, which might allow for you to pop some extra cooldowns or something like that to help your healer out. Lastly, you can see who has threat on something so that you can interfere or help the party members that might need it. For example, if you're playing a DPS, you can see when the healer has threat without actually having to look. And as a tank, you'll know who has threat. Even if you feel it was ripped away from you, you'll be able to see where that threat has gone. So hopefully this helped a little bit. Good luck out there in your adventures. And if you have any questions about how to set up voodoo or healing in general, just let me know. Again, I'm not a certified amazing player or anything like that, but I do do my best. So hopefully, Hopefully my knowledge is useful to you, especially if you're new to healing and I've never done it before, because I certainly do remember those days back in Wrath. Take care everybody, and Happy New Year!